Welcome to DevOps Online here with Nick Jackson. Hi Nick. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, how was your session? What did you talk about? So I really enjoyed it. I was talking about Go, but not specifically just about Go, but about why Go was the right decision for HashiCorp and how we kind of came to those decisions and some of the nice things we like about it and some of the things we maybe don't like so much. And speaking of that, uh, why does HashiCorp use Go? Why Go and not, I don't know, Rust for example or yeah. any other language? I mean, it's the, it's the balance of, of the things that we, we need out of a language. So we want something which will do a single binary that we can deploy very easily, but we want something which is very cross-compatible. The, the, the simplicity of Go, so the, the language is garbage collected, the concurrency model is very, very easy to use, which when you're building sort of highly distributed infrastructure code, concurrency is a big factor into your workflow. It just makes it re everything really, really easy for us. And did you just uh, use Go from the very beginning, or did you start using some other programming languages and then you discovered Go and started using it? No, we, we started off, Vagrant was written in Ruby. Oh. And, um, and Ruby's a language which I, I write myself and, and something which I really, really love writing. But again, the, the, the things that sort of started to think about the transition for us were that packaging the Ruby code was, was very difficult. Um, whereas packaging Go is, is literally download a binary from GitHub and you're all set. Very, very easy. And Go is obviously a very popular programming languages, I, language. I mean, um, Stack Overflow found that a lot of developers are using it both at work and outside of work. And uh, the Hyperledger project actually announced that they are using Go and developers were very happy to hear that. So, I mean, what's so special about it? I mean, I, I think for me, it's the simplicity. And I think that's probably why there's been this meteoric rise. It's because it's such an easy language to learn. You can sort of get to grips with it and write your first Go program in a matter of minutes. And then I think that helps the adoption, so people don't kind of get into that phase of, I like the look of this language, but I can't get it to really work, and therefore they, they abandon it. With, with Go, you don't really have that problem. You, you sort of install it, it works. So you can kind of concentrate on the task that you're trying to do, rather than fighting a compiler or fighting a package manager or, or, or sort of any of the, 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 sort of the other features. I think also because it gives you such a, a rich, static library. So there's things like the HTTP libraries are all built in the static, the cryptography, um, networking, there's, there's a huge amount of stuff in there. And, and that makes it really easy to kind of write your first programs because there's, again, very little that you need to do other than sort of flip through some docs and then um, run go build. But it certainly has its limitations. I mean, it's not perfect. So. What are those limitations for HashiCorp and how do you work around them? So I think, I mean, there's, there's limitations which are sort of in the, in the language from the perspective that it, it's really nice to write kind of small and succinct applications. We, we have some pretty big Go code bases and which are generally fairly well received by the, the, the sort of the community. Um, and and that, that's cool. I think a lot of the criticism comes at a, like the lack of language level features, polymorphism, generics. For me and for us in general, that's, that's not really a problem. And in fact, it's a, a benefit. Some of the things I think we would like kind of, if not necessarily addressed, but maybe acknowledged is that the, the error package is a little bit too light. And the, the logging packages are, are a little bit too light. And, and whilst that's, that's kind of to the ethos of Go, that you get a solid foundation of which you can build on, for things like errors and for logging, which are cross-package, it, it kind of, there's no real set standard that anybody adheres to, and it would be nice for the, the, the sort of um, the language developers to, to recognize that and kind of say, well, here's the Go way to deal with errors and um, the Go way to sort of manage logging so that it, it's more of a, 
friendly, uh, friendly to approaching community. I see. And um, even though Go is like a fairly new programming language uh, compared to some others, uh, it has achieved a lot so far. So, um, um, do other languages compare to it? I mean, can it take down Java, for example? <laughs> is that possible? <laughs> Uh, this is a great opportunity for me to troll Java, isn't it? But um, <laughs> go ahead. I'll, I'll I'll resist. No, I've I've no. I think it's it's sort of different different aims. I mean, Java's Java's incredibly performant. I mean, it, it's if you look at like the Tech Empower benchmarks, Java and Java Servlets are are up there. On an enterprise level, Java is also very very well sort of embedded and. And it can be difficult for an organization to do a kind of a whole scale change. And it's always very popular. I mean, Java's got to be the number one most popular language. Um, I would kind of look at it and say, is there anything that Java can do that Go cannot? Um, and for my application, which is predominantly kind of around infrastructure code, microservices, I would, I would actually say no. I mean, I, I think the sort of the, the features of Go are, are good enough, um, and, and if not, somewhat better. The fact that the standard library has a built-in web server, again, just sort of recovering the, you know, cryptography, all of those things are first-class citizens. They're really, really, really important in the work that we do. So it's nice to have them. Um, I would recommend everybody who who's currently coding Java check out, uh, check out Go and give it. Give it a try. It's, it really is a super language. So HashiCorp is uh, in love with Go and will continue to use it. I, I mean, so we, we literally chatted about this last week, um, and I spoke to both Mitchell and Armon about this. And we have there's not a single sort of language out there at the moment that's that's either existing or emerging, which which would kind of make us want to to rethink our approach. Um, I, I think I mean Go's like maybe nine years old or something in, in total. But I, I don't even think it started to scratch the surface. I mean, the adoption curve seems to be getting bigger and bigger every year. I mean, if you, even if you look at it in terms of conferences, Go was incredibly fringe four years ago, whereas now there's some massive mainstream conferences like Go for Con over in Denver and Golang UK and in London and, um, and, and globally. So. It, it seems to just be getting bigger and bigger and more popular and more popular. That's great. Perhaps more companies will just adopt Google, uh, go and well, get think, rid of Yeah, the get rid of the, I, I think it depends on what you're building. So I mean, the, I think part of the popularity is the transition from a kind of a monolith mindset to a more distributed system mindset. And, and Go and is incredibly successful at, at doing that. If you're sort of building huge monolithic systems, then languages like Java with their sort of complicated um, object-oriented approaches are much better suited. Um, but the way that we develop systems, the architectural patterns that we're using is, is hugely, hugely changed over the last couple of years. And it, that, that doesn't seem to be slowing down. We, we seem to be getting further and further into more distributed, um, smaller systems, functions as a service is a, is a massively popular thing. And again, that's yet another layer of deconstruction on even microservices. So I think its success will continue to grow. And what do you personally expect to see in the next big release of Go? So I'd like when to see, <laughs> yeah, when it's coming. I, um, I mean, I, I really only have two wishes. I, I'd like to see kind of a maybe an interface proposal around errors to introduce things like error codes rather than errors just being kind of strings um, and I'd like to see the same interface approach around logging um, and, and that's kind of just more of a, a guideline that I'd like to see from the language developers um, I'm not really worried about things like generics I'm I'm I don't mind that the language, I'd be quite happy if the actual language itself syntactically did not evolve a great deal. Um, speed and performance, there's my wish. <laughs> Good to know. I'm sure Google is uh, 
taking the feedback and yeah, transforming it into something great. And one last question. What's next for HashiCorp in terms of products and perhaps What's Terraform next for Bolt? HashiCorp? Well, well, so something we exciting. we're going to continue to build on um, the existing products where we're working on stuff to make it easier to add more providers to Terraform. That's currently in action. Um, Nomad is, is really sort of incredibly enterprise stable now and we're seeing some, some adoption um, on, on Nomad. Vault has been, has been massive um, and we're, we'll look at some things to again continue to improve the security aspects, improve the feature aspects um, and maybe people should watch HashiConf in September if they want to hear some stuff that I can't tell you right now. <laughs> Good to know. Thank you for the interview and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you so much.